Uh, do you mind if I make you smell like a cough drop? Sure. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Ian Harvey. I'm a massage therapist. This is my friend, Rachel. Hi. Okay, so today we're going to be, don't just stare at it the whole time. Today, <laughs> we're going to be working with headache. Uh, when you get a client in your office who has headaches, the first question I want you to ask is, where do you feel these headaches? Because not every headache is the same. Some people will feel them behind the eyes. Some people will feel them in the frontal region right here. Some people will feel them primarily in the occipital region. Others will be all temporal. My current client has a, would you relax? Right, sorry. My current client has a combination of these things. It's primarily on her left side. I'm going to be demonstrating on the right side when she's face up. But uh, she, she, most of her symptoms are on the left side. But she's got a combination. She's got some stuff going on in her frontal region up here. And she's got some stuff going on. She says it feels like it's shooting down into the jaw. And that she's got a lot of tension up here in the occipital region. And that it feels like it comes from this area right here in her upper back. This all sounds, this all kind of makes sense. She's got trapezius acting up which latches right here. And this occipital region, it refers forward. It refers into the frontal region, sometimes behind the eyes. I asked her if she ever has any jaw pain, and she said yes. The jaw refers up into the temporal region. So I'm thinking that there's just a bunch of stuff like holding her head down and pounding it for its lunch money. <laughs> so we need Speaking to work with the jaw. We need to work with this anterior neck. We need to work with trapezius and all this stuff down into the shoulder and maybe even rotator cuff because if rotator cuff is too strong, it can be pulling outward on that scapula and giving trapezius a hard time. Uh, just as a note, uh, my client initially reported this as being a sinus headache. And that would be, this is a sinus region. So when your client tells you that, I don't want you to immediately say, okay, sinus headache, that's something I can't work with. That's allergies, that's things outside of my purview. Ask if they have pain here, ask if they have tightness here, and investigate a bit. Don't take anything at uh, face value. Okay, so as always, I'm going to be working from a myofascial perspective. I'm gonna be using this stuff, Prosage, pretty good stuff. Uh, Safflower seed oil, menthol, lanolin, lavender oil. Is that good? Yeah. All right. Uh, good stuff. Very nice glide. Uh, I'll have a link to it down in the description. If you buy it, I'll get like 6%, so that's pretty sweet. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not going to use a lot. I'm going to use about a drop. Okay. And Rachel, to begin, mm -hmm. go ahead and take some easy, deep breaths. Always make your initial contact slowly and gently. You're interfacing with someone else's nervous system. And if you were to just try to barge your way in, that might not be received very well. So I'm thinking these sheets of fascia and of drawing them up. I'm coming up into the occiput, but I'm not stopping there. I'm going up into the hairline a bit. Do you mind if I mess up your hair, by the way? That's fine. All right, good stuff. So think origin to insertion and beyond. I'm not going to stop just because I've reached an insertion point. Am I recording? I hope so. Good. I would hope so. <laughs> when you're working on someone uh, in this, when you're at the head of the table, when you're working on their face, be careful where you're breathing. If you're new out of, fresh out of massage school, don't breathe in people's faces. It's no fun. Have a mint. Or have a mint first. All of the above. 
coming up into the scalp. Rachel, see if you can allow your shoulders to be as heavy as possible. Try not to Tense. assist with, uh, okay. yeah. Sometimes when you're coming under the thoracic region or when you're going up into the cervical region, your client might try to help out and you might have floating head syndrome or <laughs> floating thorax syndrome. In that case, just bring that to your client's attention. And some more easy deep breath. Okay, and I could spend a little bit, uh, bit more time doing this bilateral warming, and that's a darn good idea. I could do a few more strokes up like this, following trapezius, some of which I might start out in the scalene region with my thumbs. So smoothing, warming, melting, and taking a lot of time. And then eventually I want to come into this unilateral work. So I'm going to do this hand over hand thing that uh, I like. I'm placing a curved hand or an open fist at the shoulder and moving superiorly and an open palm in the upper pectoral region going laterally. And Rachel, see if you can allow your head to roll if it feels like it. So my objective now is to work with trapezius and to get it to lighten up. I'm going to hit it again when I flip her over, but there's a lot of good stuff that I can do while I have her supine. Is any of this too much so far? Nope, very good. Thank you. And anytime I work with headache, I'm going to work with the scalenes just a little bit. I've got my thumbs uh, toward the clavicle and I'm gently rocking the first rib, plunging down with my thumb and pressing up with my fingers just in a kind of gentle rocking motion. I'm not trying to make anything pop, I'm not trying to cause any big changes, I'm just trying to get some softening of this anterior tissue. If you have any difficulty walking under your client's thoracic region like this, shape your hand like this and you're going to use your punching knuckles as a fulcrum, your carpal metacarpal joints, you're going to use those as a fulcrum as you press up. And don't be afraid to 
make that rib cage pop up a bit. That upward pressure is going to feel nice. Okay, and I'm actually going to do a little bit of trigger point stuff. It's the weirdest thing. All right, Rachel, I'd like you to let me know if you feel anything that goes up either into your head or into the base of your skull, okay? okay. So to search for trigger points, I'm going to be slowly unfurling this muscle, kind of searching in a grid pattern. There are places where I know trigger points usually hide, so when I go to those places, I'm going to slow way down. It hurts, but it's not going up. Okay. So that would definitely count as a trigger point, but I'm looking for that referral. Okay, so I've searched that lateral portion, so I'm going to go a little bit more medial. So that's going down. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good stuff, but not what I'm after today. Yep. Right there. Mm -hmm. Now, did I pass over it, or is that about right? Mm, I think you pass over a little bit. Okay, so if I'm really booking it as I'm searching for a trigger point and I find something, I always ask if I passed over it, because I tend to. Let me know when I'm right back on. All right, there. Okay, and take some easy deep breaths. And keep a mental eye on that referral. Let me know when that referral dies down. Okay. Has there been any change, including intensification? It's actually kind of throbbing a little throbbing. in my head. Okay. So I'm going to hang out here for a little bit longer. If it stays that way, we're going to move on. Okay. So some easy deep breaths. It's not going up as much now. Okay. So that referral that was going up into your head has died down a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, and that's all I ask. So when I do this work, I... Okay, so when I do this work, I 
I'm not necessarily looking for the trigger point itself to calm down, I'm looking for the referral to calm down, and for that I rely on communication. Some people can palpate the trigger points and feel them going away, I don't have that power. That sounds like a superpower to me. <laughs> so, communication. You hit something a second ago. Did I? Okay. So I'm moving even further medial, and I'm unfurling this trapezius. Is it right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just passed it. Let me know when I'm right back on it. You're close. Okay. There. Okay. Now is that too much? Mm-mm. Okay, but you can feel it up in your head. Some more of those easy deep breaths. Be very patient with this, with headaches. Don't be too afraid if the feeling intensifies when you first hit these trigger points. If that's the case, stick around for a few more breaths, and if it keeps going up, then get out of dodge. But usually it will ramp up a bit and then fade out. Rachel, have another look at that referral. Has that changed at all? It's gone down. Gone down? Good. All right. And I'm not necessarily interested in the referral going away completely. Um, you know, I don't expect to... She's been having headaches for a long time. I don't expect to fix them today, this session. That's, I think, asking a bit much of her that nervous system. That would be system. nice. Well, stranger things have happened, but it's not what I expect. All right, and let your head roll. Some other good areas to work with would be uh, the pecs, including pectoralis minor, just in case there's any um, excess tone in that anterior upper torso. If you can get that to calm down, then that tug of war will stop being so intense and the trapezius will get to relax, which is really all at once. The deltoids wouldn't be a terrible idea because there's a lot of fascial connection between the delts and the traps. The scalenes like we were talking about. But today I'm mostly going to be focusing on how I work with trapezius. If you'd like to see how I work with the jaw, which is something that I'm going to do off screen with Rachel today. Uh, check out a link which I plan to have right here. Go to that link and uh, that's going to be how I work with TMJ. If I have temporal headaches, I'm going to work with it the exact same way that I work with TMJ. Right there. Right there? Where are you feeling that? Well, it's reading up but it's also making other muscles twitch. Okay. Those more easy deep breaths. And when you're working with SCM, try not to over-treat on the first visit. SCM isn't used to being touched too much. So I'm going to repeat this on the other side, work on your jaw, and then I'll see you on the back. Mm. Okay. Um, 
And actually, before I have her flip, I'm going to do a couple of strips up her paraspinal muscles in her cervical region. And I'm going to be looking for some trigger points here as well. So let me know if I hit anything really interesting. To do this, I go up slowly and I backtrack often. That's painful. Okay. Any referral there? Mm -hmm. Going up into the head and along there. Okay. So it's more of those easy deep breaths. I'm going to hang out here for a while. I've got my third and fourth uh, digits sunk into the occipital region. Tell me about the intensity of that referral. Instead of it being right here, it's just a light throb okay. right there. Alrighty. Anything going on in the temples or in your forehead? No. Okay. When I'm working with trigger points, a change in sensation or a change in location is good enough for me. I'll take it. And I always, whenever I'm working with a headache patient, I always like to end supine work with a nice cranial cradle. I'm using straight fingers to come into this, then I am curving them upward so that I can untuck her chin. supporting her occipital region with three fingers with my third, fourth, and fifth digits, and they're pointed up toward her forehead. And since there are six of them there, offering support is kind of a bed of nails kind of thing. None of them is especially sharp. and I'll hold this for as long as I feel like, um, usually about 45 seconds or a minute. And what I'm feeling for is for a softening of the suboccipitals and uh, a lengthening of the neck of the cervical spine, so this is a good bit of traction. How's your headache right now? Much better. You're not just saying that for the camera? No. <laughs> so my head's not going to be in this for most of it, but <laughs> that's okay. You don't need to see my head. Uh, I'm going to get a bit more lotion. Not a ton, but I am going to start out with a, a bit more than I would use for most myofascial work just because I want to start with uh, some nice warm-up strokes. Uh, my primary focus here is the upper back, but myofascially speaking, it would be wise to work with the low back as well. 
and the hips and the legs and the feet. But, you know. So my intention here is to scoop this upper back and shoulder tissue and shove it down her back, which of course isn't what I'm actually doing. Uh, I'm just providing a little bit of traction to that fascia downward, but that's kind of the mental image I have. So the more you can scoop, the better. So I don't start my strokes here. I start my strokes here, and I'm anchoring into my own hip and allowing my hip to drive this motion, offering a comforting hand whenever I can, moving my elbow up a bit so I can offer some pressure downward, and finally I bring my arms straight. So I start with that hip anchor, then that side anchor, and then finally a straight arm. I'm never having to muscle my way through this. And Rachel, could you use more pressure than this or less? That's good. That's good? Okay. So I'm going to do a few warm-up strokes like that. Scooping that tissue up and over. And now I'm interested in making some space in this upper back. So that's going to mean getting these rotator cuff muscles to calm down, working with this inferior trapezius, working with this mid trapezius, and of course with this upper trapezius. That mid, mid hurt. You're feeling something in there? Yeah. Okay. So if I find a trigger point while I'm warming up, I'll just mentally note it and then uh, try to find it again later, because I don't want to just dive in. It's not very nervous system friendly. <laughs> so still me. Uh, I'm going to be working up some, I'm going to be working down some. I'm continuing with my warm-up. Whenever I'm using this palmer surface of my hand, I'm always leading with my fingertips. It kind of breaks the ice ahead of the rest of my uh, stroke, and it allows me to get specific into these bony prominences of the back. This is one of my favorite myofascial moves. It's two fists side by side. I'm starting by yanking some skin toward myself using my the flats of my phalanges. And then I go into knuckles. And draw this toward yourself. Get above your client. Don't worry that you're passing over bone. We're worried about fascia right now. And you can linger right here, where the arm meets the shoulder. There's some good tenderness tissue right here. There's often some good trigger point type, t type uh, activity here. Yes. Anytime you're shoving the tissue up like this, make sure to occasionally bring it back down. You don't want it to leave them feeling squished up in the cervical region. Okay, so let's do some specific work in the inferior trapezius. We're going to be using fingertips here. And I'm rolling 
ride over that trapezius. I'm mobilizing it northward and medially. Bumping right over it. Now using paired thumbs, I'm going to find that edge of the trapezius and look for some sugar points. Rachel, let me know if anything goes up. Okay. Thank you. So for inferior trapezius, the places that you want to look are on, right on the edge there as you press it inward. And after you've humped over onto the muscle itself, pressing down toward the rib cage. So follow that border and then go past that border and work on the muscle directly. surge go in my head. Okay, let me know when I'm right on that, okay? There. Okay, and some more easy deep breaths. I usually wait about five breaths before I ask a follow-up question. And Rachel, how's the intensity of that referral? It's um, burning. So it's changed to a more burning type sensation? Yes, and it actually did go down my arm a little bit. Okay. So there seems to be a relationship between this stuff that's going up and this stuff that's going down the arm. I'm going to stick around for a couple more breaths. Let me know if there's any more change. A little spasming, but it's lessening. Okay. That's enough for me. Okay, thus ends my brief dalliance with trigger points. I don't do a whole lot of trigger point work, but I found it very useful for certain things, such as stiff neck, headache, and sometimes pain that goes down the arm. This general work that I'm doing with, uh, that I'm doing myofascially, tends to treat trigger points just fine without getting too specific. So I've worked with upper trapezius, I've worked with mid trapezius, and lower trapezius. Now I'm going to work a bit with the rotator cuff. I imagine I'll have a video on the rotator cuff eventually. I tried to make one already, but it turned out crappy. <laughs> right there is pretty painful. Okay. So, a lot of stuff going on over here. So this is me working with trigger points, but it's from a myofascial perspective. I'm not pointed straight down toward the bone. Instead, I've got this sheet of fascia that I've grabbed, and I'm keeping it stretched, and I'm waiting to feel melting under my hand. The active hand here is the one up on the shoulder. The other one is there, just there to shove some tissue up and to offer some comfort.
and if you did a good deal more work with the rotator cuff here you would not be wasting your time if all of these rotator cuff muscles are hypertonic they're going to be pulling this scapula laterally if we can get these to calm down it will get to settle in medially and some quick mobilization of the shoulder blade myofascial hold of superior trapezius. I'm going to grab as much tissue as I can. This lower hand is helping me by shoving tissue northward. And this upper hand is just sinking in with a duck grip. I'm not pinching right here. And Rachel, is that too much pressure? No. Okay. Some more easy deep breaths. And once again, I'm waiting to feel a melting sensation under my hand. To me, it feels like wet sand dropping through my fist. Other people have described it as clay getting softer, etc. Okay, so I'll also do some work up into the neck. I can do some more work with the occiput here. I can do uh, more work with the rotator cuff and with the ribs and with the spinal erectors here. And that would all be an excellent choice. Just as a recap, when you're dealing with headaches, don't forget to ask lots of good questions about where and ask follow-up questions like, do you ever have any pain in the base of your skull? Consider working with the jaw if there's any temporal involvement. Work with these structures that might be related like rotator cuff and the pecs. Anything that might be causing this trapezius to be in a greater struggle for uh, keeping the posture where it wants it to be. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section. Feel free to drop me any questions. Uh, consider subscribing, and thank you very much. I'll see you next time.